Welcome to today's edition of Reflections from Yates Chapel, coming to you from the campus of Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm Joey Shelton, Dean of the Chapel and Director of Church Relations. And as always, it is my honor to share with you today's reflection. The Gospel of Matthew tells us who Jesus is and who Jesus calls his disciples to be. We learn of who Jesus is through a man named John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the hinge between the Hebrew law and prophets and the advent of Jesus Christ. John was a peculiar character. He hung out by the Jordan River, calling people to turn from their sin and to be baptized with water as a sign of their repentance. People from various places and stations of life came to the wilderness to be baptized by John. God chose John as the one to baptize Jesus. Of course, Jesus had to convince John to do so. And as Jesus came out of the water, God revealed Jesus' true identity to the world. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. In preparing the people for who Jesus is, John the Baptist advocated a new advent of the kingdom of heaven. This advent calls for lifestyle changes, changes that honor God's kingdom of heaven, even on earth. John Wesley said this new world order is characterized in all of its aspects, political, social, economic, by God's justice and God's righteousness. God brings this realm about, but God's people are called to pray for it, seek it, and embody its values. This embodiment is known as fruit worthy of repentance. This fruit, John the Baptist proclaimed, is not dependent on your status, but upon your heart. Matthew chapter 3, the first 12 verses. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. And then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able to raise from these stones children to Abraham. Even now, the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I, and I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat and to the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Recently, I had a dream. I'm going to share it 
with you. And uh, my sister says, I'm no poet. She says, I can rhyme, but I'm no poet. So give me some patience. But I think what I'm about to attempt to do might shed some light on these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Here, hear my attempt at explanation. I came prepared. I was going to the pearly gate. I took my trophy, my award for MVP. I took my diplomas to the pearly gate, the credentials for all to see. I took my titles to the pearly gate, two houses, four cars, and an SUV. I took my licenses to the pearly gate, marriage, law, ordination, fishing, hunting, all that entitled me. I took my birth certificate to the pearly gate, proof of citizenship, not a refugee. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, front of the line is where I'm supposed to be. John the Baptist, old JB, stood at that pearly gate. I had to wait in line, and at last he laid his eyes on me. Are you a viper, a sad you see, or even a card-carrying Pharisee? Did you heed the warning of coming wrath to flee? The ax is lying at the root of the tree. Where is your fruit? It is the key, said old J.B. I said to him, you son of Abraham, I have status here before your eyes to see a trophy, diplomas, titles, and licenses that entitle me. And look, here is my birth certificate that proves to you it's me. Old JB said, I know it's you, but do you know he? Do you know the one born in a manger and then from Herod did flee? The one who taught love and acceptance and grace for all humanity? The one who hung on a tree to carry out his mission for peace and harmony? I answered, oh, you mean Jesus. Of course I know him. I prayed many prayers and gave my life to him, baptized and born again. Yes, forgiven for my sins. I'm free. Look at all the proof I brought, all blessings bestowed upon me. Yes, I do perceive all gifts from our creator, God, you cultivated worked hard, and accumulated much stuff and worldly status, said J.B. But where is the fruit? Once again, he asked of me. He went on to say, sometimes you need to hear what is said. Listen with your spirit to the Holy Spirit, which is not bound to your literacy. Remember on the mount what Jesus taught to you and me? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. What fruit is bared by their tree? God sees your heart in the way you treat all people. It's bigger than you and me. It includes the we. Finally, JB took me to see Jesus himself in all of his glory. Jesus asked old JB, who is he? JB answered, why, according to him, he is the goat, the greatest of all time. Look at his credentials that lie at your feet. What about the fruit of his heart? Jesus asked J.B. 
He does not understand me, Lord Jesus. Will you ask it of he? Jesus, filled with compassion in his eyes, stared at me. Then he said, fruit fills hunger. Fruit fulfills thirst. Fruit is a sign of hospitality. Fruit is clothing the naked, caring for the sick, visiting the imprisoned. It is a matter of expressing your heart as my heart. For when you did it to the least of these, you did it unto me. O oh Lord, said I to thee, now I understand. O oh Lord, please have mercy. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, happy Advent to you from me.